It's the season to be jolly, na 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 na, it's Dino shite. Yes guys, it's Fog Wrestling back again with your AW Dynamite review. And guess who's kicking off the story of the show, it's absolute Ricky Starks, my homie! Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks, who absolutely sucks, brother. And you know what, actually, you know what? We do have a Scalibur, Tony Schiavone and the Human Suplex Machine to have on commentary, but you know what? I actually didn't mind this opening segment. You heard it here. I actually didn't mind something on AEW. Now, saying that, I did think it was a bit pathetic that Ricky Starks was like, It doesn't matter, because he, he won a coward, but I lost a man. Mate, it doesn't matter, fuck all, because you didn't win the belt, you're not holding the gold, you're just some bum. And in that note, mate, you absolutely fucking suck. But back to the point at hand, he's cutting a pretty shit promo at this point. Out comes Jericho, cuts a like, kind of generic promo, like the, the old guy trying to recruit the newer guy, right? And then Ricky Stark's point is very good. He says a couple of months ago he looked like an earth fryer, but you know, now he's looking like a, a single dad who's going through his fifth um, divorce. He proceeds to bury all of them, says that the Jericho Appreciation Society, the J stands for jobber and you know what i've said that before we've all said it before everyone on fog wrestling said that before so you know what i totally agree with that and he says since you lost the action last week your stock has dropped jericho says that's not the answer i was looking for they then batter him out comes action andretti to the ring and then he absolutely cleans house and buries the Jericho Appreciation Society. Now you could say, oh they're trying to create a new star in Action Andretti. I will guess what guys, Action Andretti is a fucking midget and shouldn't be doing absolutely anything to these guys, right? I'm sorry, he can beat Jericho, but what, beat them all up? I'm just, I'm just not having it. It just proves Ricky Stark's point. I mean, like, I'm saying it was a not good opening segment. Apart from like Ricky Stark's response to Jericho on the mic, there was nothing really good about this, but you know what? This segment will get a point on the out of 10 at the end, at the rating at the end of the review, but that does not mean it's going to be a good review. Uh, next up, we had match 5 here between Death Triangle and the Elite. Again, it was a hardcore match. There was a barbed wire wrapped mop. Because guess what, guys? Kenny Omega, he's called the cleaner, so he uses a mop. I mean, why don't you go to being a high school janitor and then that way you can wrestle fucking kids on their lunch break because that's what you're best at doing, mate. You pedo, indie, vanilla, midget, Japanese wrestling fanny. How about that, son? Would you like that? Do you like those grapes? Fuck off back to TJ. I don't care who won this match because I guess what, guys? I didn't watch it. We promised at the start of this series we wouldn't watch any more of these matches. And yeah, guess what? The elite win don't actually give a shit, you know, because I don't. I don't brother. We then get Tony Schiavone interviewing Action Andretti um, backstage, uh, but then Jericho fireball and Andretti's face. I was trying to watch this on the highlights, but like one minute he's talking, next minute he's on the deck with a fireball, and then I had to fucking yeah see it differently, and it was just a bit of a disaster that, in my opinion. Uh, out comes Rene Paquette um, interviewing Brian. Danielson. He comes out, talks about, oh, I didn't expect them to forgive William Regal, but guess what they did today? They did forgive William Regal. I wouldn't be the wrestler I am without William Regal. And it's like, hold on here, has he not fucking cut this promo every time he's come out when he ever refers to William Regal? It gets old, right? It gets old, you know. It, it, it's just pathetic. Brian saying he cried. When Regal was in the hospital, he goes on to mention that Moxley, Claudio and Wheeler don't really give a fuck about William Regal. And William Regal's no way in there anymore. He's way back to WWE. So for fuck's sake, it's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. And then he starts going, MJF, man, you're a coward. Get your ass out of here. Ethan Page then comes out. Looks like we're going to get um, Ethan Page versus Daniel Bra who Who cares, man? Who honestly cares? I, I, I do not fucking care. Looks like we're going to get Ethan Page against Daniel Bryan. And the only guy happy about this was MJF because he was sitting watching backstage. <laughs> you know. Uh, next up, we've got FTW champion Hook taking on Exodus Prime. Of course, Hook wins. This guy, I mean, what, it was his one year anniversary not too long ago. And it's like, what's he done, man? Every match he wrestles is the same pish. Oh, but 
he was he was going to tag. Team, was it Darby Allen or was it fucking Orange Cassidy? He was going to, or was it, no, it was Jungle Boy? He was going to team up with. So yeah, I just thought they were all the same person because the show fucking sucks. But again, Hook couldn't lay a fucking glove on his dad, Taz. Taz, son, get back in the ring, and it might make this guy a bit fucking interesting. He needs something, and he absolutely, he absolutely sucks. Uh, some guy, I can't even remember, Big Bill, fucking Big Cass, that's him. Choke slams Jungle Boy into like a, a dumpster sort of thing, so. Yeah, we have that. We then have John Moxley taking on Darius uh, Martin. John Moxley uh, hits his finisher, picks up the win, man, again. Moxley, it wouldn't be a show without Moxley bleeding in some capacity, so... Moxley! Na, 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 na. You make my heart... He's a big fat bastard. Coked out junkie freak show bastard. That's what Moxley is, guys. Moxley absolutely sucks. I've, I've nothing good to say about the guy or the or the combat club. Like Daniel Bryan's pathetic. And you're like, you wish you could root for the other three guys, but when the other three guys is a meth head, a boring bastard, and the guy that looks like he's missing a chromosome, why, how can you really root for them? You can't root for them, right? Next up with Dax Harwood, and we've made a fed bury him. That will be out after this review. And Cash Wheeler, it's the revival taking on the Guns, Austin and Colton, brother. And guess what? The Guns won. I'm happy about this. Despite the fact there's no tag titles on the line here. So, you know, not exactly uh, brilliant. You know, I wish they lost their titles. But then again, guys, when their titles are the AAA and the, the Japanese ones, who, who gives a fuck if they lose them or not? Because they're meaningless. They, they, they do not mean he ha. Uh, we then have Keith Lee in the ring. Rick Ross comes out, tries to introduce um, that boring bastard. What's his name? Swerve. I mean, this whole feud, man, just absolutely sucks. Who, who who cares for this? Who honestly cares for this? Nobody cares for this. And I believe Rick Ross actually said, fuck, but I, I didn't get to hear it. About, it was threat. Was it threat? No, it was on no DQ that he said, fuck. Oh, he said, fuck. Oh, woo. Brother, you know, Swerve and then his, 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 his team. Whatever. I mean, it's a bunch of jobbers, man. It's like... This, like, see, see, no, see, seeing Keith Lee, they did the cinder block stomp, right? And I actually saw this on my Instagram this morning. I almost forgot to fucking mention this, right? But he's lying there on the steel steps with his fat, flabby stomach hanging out, like some big, fat uncle that's just at everything at Thanksgiving or he's at everything at Christmas Day, man. It was disgusting. And you call this guy a professional fucking wrestler, supposed to take this guy, oh, this guy's one of the greatest athletes of all time. People actually said, no, oh, he's one of the best, greatest athletes to come out of NXT. I think NXT's been filled with jobbers over the past decade, but come on, guys. Keith Lee, flabby Keith Lee sitting there with his big fat stomach hanging out. The cinder block abs got absorbed by his flab, man. This was absolutely horrendous. I actually forgot. I, I was actually about to gloss completely over that and move on to the main event. Thankfully... I didn't, because I just, that needed to be said, right? That needed to be said, that, oh, see, seeing that this morning on my Instagram, I was near fucking sick. But anyway, guys, it's time for your main event. We have got Jamie Hater with uh, Brett Baker on our corner against Akira, Akira Shida for the AEW's Women's World Championship. Again, why is this match main event? Because, like, you have a three-on-three, -three, no DQ match, right? But to see if the Elite are so big a star, should they not be in the main event? I don't get AEW, like, they, they, they never put stuff in the main event that belongs. I mean, apart from paper fuse, but man, if they fucked that up, like, they really do need shot. Um, this match, I mean, it's like, when WWE put women in the main event, I mean, sometimes they don't belong there, right? But, like, most of the time, it's like, all right, you know, this, this match kind of warrants a main event spot, you know, like, you know, if it's like Becky Lynch or Height, you know, against, Ro like, Ronda Rousey or something, right? But see Jamie Hayter against, like, Hikira Shida, this match does not warrant a main event spot. Like, see even Trish and Lita main event at Raw in 2004. Those two warrant that, because they're fucking legends. These two are shite. They don't warrant hee-haw, right? Jamie Hayter wins, right? It comes... Tony Storm, big brawl, out comes Soraya, it's Paige, kick the, kick the fucking Brit Baker, and you know what, Paige has been very sloppy since her return, but it was actually a pretty good looking kick compared to what it has been, so I'll give credit where credit is due guys, and that is where AEW Dynamite ends guys, you know what, it wasn't the worst show, but it just felt like, this is, this is AEW's roster, 
You know, th this is it. Like, who was missing tonight? I mean, you had Jericho, you had Brian, you had Moxley, you had the Elite, you know. All right, MJF was backstage, like, so he didn't actually have quite a bigger role, but he was still on the show, you know. Just goes to show you, like, where's fucking Sting, Matt Hardy? All oh, these guys, have Matt, fucking Mark Henry, the big show. Why are these guys not getting used in more prominent fucking roles, man? Because people know who they are. Like, I mean... Things been tag team with Darby Allen for what, like two years now? And it's just not got Darby Allen over. So how about you fucking forget about that wee experiment and get Darby Allen out to fucking put Sting in the world title picture while he's still capable at this fucking age? Is it too much to ask, guys? Is it too much to ask? Probably. But in terms of this show, I'm going to get a 2 out of 10. That might be high. It might be low. Merry Christmas to you all here on Fog Wrestling. We love you all. Apart from the wee weirdos that comment clown emojis because you are just freak show bastards. But until next time, peace.